Welcome everybody to our year of hats. This is the Killington Bulky Tunisian hat. It is that squishy, big hat that's just cozy and something that you can make in just a short period of time. It's a lot of fun. This hat uses just a couple of Tunisian stitches, but what's really fun about it is it's worked in the round. So we're gonna get into all the details, but let's first talk about what do you need? What do you need to make this? So for the first version here where the color changes, you obviously need some color changing yarn. So let's take a look at what you need. What you're gonna need is you're going to need one ball of Karen sprinkle cakes. One ball is actually enough to make two hats. So you can just go ahead and grab one of these guys and it'll do the work for you. It's gonna change colors for you, which is a lot of fun. Now, what if you wanna make what I what we like to call the Charlie Brown version of the hat? You could also think of it as the Steelers version of the hat. If you would like to make the solid color, what could you grab? What we suggest there is that you're going to go ahead and grab two colors of Bernat Softy Chunky. You just need one ball of each color of whatever you like, and you'll, you'll have one B A and one B B. It's up to you if you want the darker or the lighter to be your colors. We're going to talk a little bit more about colors in a minute, but before we get there, let's chat about your hook. What hook do you need? As you can tell, this is a unique hook, right? What you need is a double-ended hook, which means that you have a hook on each side. And the reason we need this for our Tunisian is that we're going to be going in the round, which means we're going to pick up a couple stitches on our forward pass, then flip and work them off on our return. Don't worry, we're going to show you how to do that. What size you need? I was using this knit pow 12 millimeter hook it's an o it's very very big <laughs> these yarns are bulky weight it's very very big but let's say you don't have a double-ended tunisian hook what could you use well if you have a pair of interchangeable hooks that's where you have a hook and a long cord what you can do is on one side put a 12 millimeter hook or whatever hook you need to get gauge and then on the other side, attach your cord on the other side where you would normally attach a stopper. Instead, attach another hook. So you've just made your own interchangeable hook. Obviously, if you're using interchangeables, you only have one side that will be like the size you need to get gauge. On this one, that's okay. Just go one size smaller. So let's say for your forward pass, you're going to be using your 12 millimeter size. And let's say for the return, you'll use 11 or 10 millimeter, something smaller, uh, so that you can use your interchangeable hook size. For this hat in particular, I did not do my interchangeable set. I really liked using this wooden hook by Knit Pal. It made working the easiest for me. All right. Now that's all you need in terms of supplies. But if you notice in the pattern, there's something very special I need you to do. So the first thing you're going to do is you need to split up these balls. Because when we're working in the round, we need to have yarn that is split. So whatever color you decide to be your A color. If you're using the Bernat Softy Chunky, I need you to cut it into two balls. Which all it means is I need you to wind up so you have two balls of yarn. You'll be using this. When I tell you this, if this is your B, you'll be using this. What if you're not using two different colors? What do you do then? No problem. What you're going to do if you're going to use your Karen cakes is I want you to cut it into three <laughs> balls of yarn. So let's take a look at our hat. What's going to happen is you're going to have one ball is going to do most of the work. It's where it's going to change colors. You can see where it's going to change colors. That's going to be basically your color A. Then you need another ball 
that's going to be your return pass for your cuff. And then you want another ball that's going to be your return pass for this color work in here. So basically, you can get very creative or don't. If you want, you can ball these up into each of the individual colors if you want, or just guesstimate about a third each of the way and then let the yarn do the work. So that's your first task. Cut these up into balls and then join me for the start of our hat. See you soon. Let's get into this hat. It is super fun to make. What you want to do is start with a chain 40, which will be the circumference of our hat. We work our hat in the round, in the round, going from our cuff all the way to the top of our brim. So what you do is chain 40 and then to the first chain, you're going to slip stitch. Now you'll notice I'm going to be going in our back ridge. It's the bumps in the back, the ones that are kind of a pain to work in. This is where I'm inserting my hook. So I make sure that I don't have a twisted chain, that it's all set, and then I join with a slip stitch to the first chain. And this on my hook is my first stitch. You'll pick up a stitch in each of the chains all going all the way around. Using the bulky weight yarn, it's a little bit easier to get your hook in there. If it is not easy, feel free to rip out remake the chain in a hook that's slightly bigger so your chains will be bigger. But you're going to pick up a stitch in each chain going around. What you'll notice is when you use that back bump, you get these beautiful Vs on the bottom because we don't really finish it. You can see the V on the bottom of my hat. So that's why we want to go through this little bit harder, trickier way of going in our chains. Of course, if this is frustrating, you can always use, go in, go in wherever it's easiest for you. Don't worry about what the edge looks like. It'll lo look a little different than mine, but if this is frustrating, taking it a little too lo long, feel free to not go in the back bump and go into any loop that you want. All right, once you have a comfortable amount picked up on your forward pass, because we're working in the round, we keep working in the round. When you get to a comfortable amount, you're going to turn it around and you're going to start using your second color A. So if you're using that cake yarn, just to note any two balls as your color A. Make that color be something that's really vibrant and different. All of that is in the notes so you'll be able to see the color difference. Well when you come and now we're ready to do our return pass, what you're going to do is fold in your other color or your other ball of A. You're going to fold in your color and you're just going to yarn over, pull through one. Now we will yarn over, pull through two, all the way around our work. So from here on out, there's no more yarn over pull through one when you get to, when you get to the start of your round. It's always going to be yarn over pull through two because we're working in the round. You keep yarning over pulling through two when you're working in the round until you get to about, you know, two stitches left, just a few. Then you turn it around. I like to move You'll notice I switched my balls around just so that the ends don't get tangled. 
And I'm going to go ahead and go back to what I was doing, just picking up a stitch in each. So you go ahead, pick up a stitch in each. And you can come back when we get to round two. <laughs> When you are all done with round one, starting ready to start round two, this is what it will look like before you start again and you go all the way around. What you might want to do is what I like to do is I like to mark off where my first stitch is when I'm going around and around. Because after a while, it's all going to kind of start looking the same. So if you want to grab a stitch marker, and mark off for yourself where the first stitch is. It can be kind of helpful to give you a visual clue of where you're going. Also, you'll know that you're back at the beginning when you have these tails to deal with. But it's optional if you would like to mark off where you start. To get moving from this part, now we're going to start our pattern, which is going to be where you can see here, there is a Tunisian knit stitch and a Tunisian pearl stitch. So all of our stitches are the vertical strands. These are all of our stitches. That's where we're going to be placing our hook. To do the knit stitch, you're going to Insert your hook between the vertical bars, yarn over from behind and pull up a loop. Now for your purl, you're gonna put the yarn in front of your work, insert your hook like you're doing a Tunisian simple stitch, wrap the, round, the yarn around from the front and pull up. Now we'll do a Tunisian knit stitch. Insert your hook between these two vertical bars, not between the stitches, but between the two vertical bars. You got it right if the stitches now sit like two straight lines. Now a Tunisian pearl stitch. Pull your yarn to the front, insert your hook into the next stitch, wrap around, pull up a loop. Knit stitch. Insert your hook between the two vertical bars, pull up a loop. Purl stitch, move your yarn to the front, insert your hook like you're doing a simple stitch, wrap around from the front, pull through. Again, a knit stitch between those two vertical bars, yarn over, pull up a loop. Purl stitch, insert your hook with your yarn in the front, wrap it around the stitch, pull up a loop. You can review doing knit and purl stitches in our Tunisian boot camp series. After a while, you kind of get in the rhythm of doing it. You'll keep doing these stitches until you have a good amount on your hook. I go about a third of the way around the hat, or you can really do any amount that you want. Then you're going to turn your work and keep working them off 
yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and you'll keep going. You will see that we're going in a spiral. There'll be a visual jump, like a visual bump. The first goes down a little bit. We'll even this out later when you weave in your ends. But don't worry, you wanted to make this easy, just keep going around and around in a circle. It's basically a continuous spiral all the way up your hat is what we're making. And then you can turn your work and continue on your way. Last one I did was a knit, so now I'll do a purl. And just continue that all the way through the cuff, the knit in the purl, the knit in the purl. All right, so keep working for as many rows as the pattern, the rounds as the pattern calls for. And then join me and we'll work on the body next. See you soon. Yay, we're ready for the body. We're gonna be working in the round again. No decreases. This time we'll be using the Tunisian knit stitch, which we've been doing and the Tunisian reverse stitch, which basically shows off all of the return passes you've been doing. That's why you see all these pops of color. That's how these big color blocks come about, is from the reverse stitch, which is why in the last round of your cuff, it told you to change your color, which is now why you don't see two color A's, you see a color A and a color B. We had to change our color. All we do is just follow the pattern. You can use the diagram. You can use the words, whatever works for you. And it's going to tell you when to change your color. And what's great about this is for the forward pass, you're just using A. For the return pass, you're only using B. The changing the color is only because the, re the reverse stitch that we do pops that color forward. So there's actually not color work. Oh, it's like a surprise. I love it. Okay, let's do it. Round one. I'm just gonna do a bit of round one because you'll be kept on to this real quick. You'll notice, yes, I marked my first stitch. I just like to know where I am in our pattern. So I got my first stitch. I'm ready for the first stitch of the row. In this one, it's two knit stitches. So I'm gonna do knit stitch. I'm gonna do a knit stitch. Okay, now I'm gonna do a reverse. In the reverse, you're going in the back bar. The front bar is where we do our Tunisian simple stitch. We're going to insert our hook back here instead with the yarn in the back and pull up a loop. And boom, our color is sitting where color wasn't. So this is our pretend color work. Then we're going to do a knit stitch in the next three. So just insert your hook between those two vertical bars, pull up a loop insert between those two vertical bars, pull up a loop. And what you see is the knit stitch hides the right turn pass. So you don't see that color. Now we get to the reverse stitch. We're just inserting my hook into the back vertical bar. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Let's do another three knit stitches. And it's time for a reverse. Just insert your hook from the back. I'm not twisting around. This is the simple stitch. All I'm doing is I'm inserting my hook into the back, the back vertical strand. This is the front vertical strand. This is the back vertical strand. And my yarn overing yarn is in the back. I'm pulling up a loop. And when you do that, you can see your work immediately you see that, that those colors start popping through. When you get a comfortable amount in, now it's just time to work them off. And again, it's just yarn over, pull two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way 
across. This, the work that you're doing right now, sets it up so that you can do color work on the next round. So when you're working off on the return pass, it's always setting it up for if you're going to do those reverse stitches it'll be for the next one. So you have color available for the next row. And you can't tell now, but basically if you look at it like this, this is all you'll see. These all get hidden behind. So you're just going to follow the directions. It's going to tell you to do a different amount. This one was a, one reverse with three knit. Then on the you're going to go for the next two rounds. It'll be three reverse and one knit, and you'll space it out. So you're just going to follow that pattern, and then we're going to work our decreases together to show you how to do those. Exciting. All right. Go have fun, go play, and I will see you soon. I felt alright, always felt alright. Okay. Here we are, ready for our decreases. So this is what your hat would look like after you finish the body. We have our cuff, our body. Now we're just ready to close it all up at the top. And how we're going to do our decreases is we're on our forward pass. We're just doing Tunisian knit stitch over and over and over and over again. The decreases happen on the return. So when we were doing the body, like all of the thinking work, I like to say like, okay, I need to have, you know, one Tunisian reverse and then three knit. That was all happening on the forward pass. And you kind of got to relax on the return pass because all that you were doing is yarn over pulling through two, yarn over pulling through two. It's reversed. Now it's reversed. So now all of your thinking happens on your return pass, not your forward pass. Your forward pass will be real easy. It's just a knit stitch. It's all you're doing is just knit, knit, knit over and over again. But when you're returning, this is where we're going to start to decrease. And the reason that we do this is if you can see on this hat is when we're decreasing, we really need these lines to start to come together. And when you have anything going on in your return pass, that could be a slightly different color, you want to have it to be your knit you know, you want your decrease to be happening on your return pass, not your forward pass. Because if your return pass is slightly different color, you're gonna, it's going to pop through. If you have kind of speckly yarn, it you won't really notice it. But if you have solid color yarn like this, you don't notice it at all. But it does come through. Like if you still have your high contrasty color going on here, you're not going to like the look. It's going to be too much color. So when you're doing your carrying cakes, you don't see it as much. You know, you, you're not noticing it as vibrantly. If you are using the solid color yarns, this is where I tell you to go back to your return pass being the A-balls. I mean, you're still going to be using the A-balls with your carrying cakes, but they can be a slightly different color. Um, but here, you want the same color. All right. Let's hop in. The way we, we do this is that all that we're going to do is we're going to pick up and do knit stitches. So that's just inserting your hook between these two vertical bars, picking up a loop. So we have our next two vertical bars, pick up a loop. Insert between those two vertical bars, pick a loop. A loop. This is your forward pass. This is the only thing you do in your forward pass. Just knit all the way. So you're going to knit until you have a comfortable amount on your hook. Now, what you want to do is make sure, let's say that you haven't moved your first stitch in a while. Because I can tell you, after a while, it gets pretty easy, especially with the color work. You can see where the first stitch is. But what I want you to do is make sure that you have your first stitch 
marked because now we actually have to pay attention to where that first stitch is. We don't want to start decreasing at the end of the last round. We're not going to end up with the right number. So the first thing I want you to do is to move this up so you know that this stitch is the first stitch of your decreasing round. This is finishing up our hat. So I'm just going to finish up our hat until I get to my marked stitch. So I go slow and be like, oh, here is my first stitch. Okay, so that first stitch, now I'm ready to go. Now I'm gonna start my decreases. The way the decreases work is you follow the pattern and it's going to give you a pattern across. What it's telling me to do is you're going to yarn over, pull through two, twice, just to get in the rhythm. So that's not decreasing anything. So I did it for the first one. So I'm going to do it for the second one. So essentially think of it as I just did regular stitch and a regular stitch. Yarn over, pull through two. Now it wants me to do a decrease. The decrease is just yarn over, pull through two stitches or three loops on your hook. Either way to look at it. So yarn over, pull through three loops or two stitches. That's your decrease. Now it tells me to just work your loops off as normal for three stitches. One, two, three. So I'm going to yarn over, pull through two. Normal way of doing it. Yarn over, pull through two. Still a normal way of doing it. Yarn over, pull through two. Again, we're just, we're not decreasing. Each one of these has been worked off and not decreased. Remember, our decreases would put two stitches together. Now we're going to go ahead and yarn over, pull through two stitches, or you look at it as one, two, three loops on your hook. And when you're used to looking at it as either way, this is not a stitch. This is your return pass. Think of this as like your free loop on your hook. These two are stitches. So you can either look at it as yarn over pulling through two stitches. I like to look at it as that because that means that in my brain, yes, this is making a decrease. But what you're actually doing is yarn over pulling through three loops on your hook. You'll notice that I don't use loops and stitches interchangeably. They're very different because um, you can easily get confused. So then yarn over, pull through three loops on your hook. When I'm working this decrease, this, this way of decreasing, I should say, in the round, I like to turn and go back and pick up stitches after I've done the last decrease. It helps me remember where I was in that pattern because it's basically decrease three regular stitches, decrease three regular stitches for this first round of the crown. And that when you're coming over here and pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, it can be really easy to forget where you were in that pattern. There's, you know, you're like, uh, I don't remember what I was doing because this is just rhythmic and you're, you know, relaxes your brain. You can really, really easily forget where you were. You're like, okay, great time to turn. And then you go, uh oh, uh, where was I in the pattern? So that's why I find it super important to turn around when you finished a decrease, because at least then you have a stopping point. The other way you can do it is I want you to look at your stitches. You can pull them apart. So if I pull them all apart, you can see that. This stitch is a singular stitch. This stitch is a singular stitch. This is a singular stitch. Those were my three. This one has two stitches that are grouped in essentially the same chain in that return pass. That's a decrease. So it does help to be able to see your work a little bit as you're doing it. All right, let's go back to that pattern. So I need to work off as normal three stitches. One, two, three. Now I do a decrease. I'm going to yarn over, pull through three loops on my hook. Then I go back and do the pattern. One, two, three. 
I'm going to do another decrease. I'm going to pull through these two stitches, yarn over, pull through the two stitches, or the three loops on my hook. So after I finish the decrease, so now I'm going to turn around and go back and keep working on this round. So the decrease part of the crown is a very simple yarning over, pulling through three loops on your hook. That is not the hard part of this crown. The hard part is remembering where you are. Um, it will definitely, it definitely taxes your brain. It's one of those things because it's so simple. This is so simple, right? That was so easy to pick up. And then you turn around and you, it's almost like you forgot everything because everything up until now we've been able to see. So this is where I want you to be able to look at your work, look at the past of where you were and you go, okay, these three stitches, they're sitting out on their own. I can see that. I can see there was a decrease here. So I finished on a decrease. Now I'm going to go back in the pattern of the round, which was one, two, three. All I did was work three stitches off as normal. Then I do a decrease, we yarn over, pull through three loops on my hook. There's my decrease. One, two, three. Now we do a decrease, yarn over, pull through. All right, so as you go, it is, the only key here is to keep track of where you were on your return pass. That part is not easy because it was really easy when you were working in the round to see where you were um, because the color popped right out at you. It's not as easy on the crown. But keep in mind, what you're doing is really, really easy. If you want what you can do is keep track of every time you do a decrease because the pattern is going to tell you how many decreases you have for each round. So if you want, you can put a little mark on a piece of a scrap paper. It'll be like, okay, I did one, I did two, I did three, so that you can keep track. Because if you didn't put them exactly where I have it listed in the pattern, that's okay. It's all right. As long as you're decreasing the right amount each crown, it'll be okay if they're slightly offset. But basically, this, that's all you need to know for the whole rest of the hat. Is It's just going to be following those decreases in the pattern. When you get to the top, you're just going to have a long tail, weave through the little bit of the hole that's at the top, and you're done. Weave in your ends in here, and you got yourself a squishy, wonderful hat that you have. Add a pom-pom to the top if you would like. I know we do. And that's it. So enjoy your hat. Can't wait to see what you cook up. So excited. Bye, everybody.